Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm John and this is Dennis and today we're going to be talking about Law Abiding Citizen. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of Blu-ray reviews, 4K Blu-ray reviews, TV reviews, game reviews, tech reviews, we try and do them all here on this channel and nothing helps out more than by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So Law Abiding Citizen was released in 2009 as directed by F. Gary Gray who directed a bunch of famous music videos including Ice Cube's Today Was a Good Day and then directed The Fate of the Furious from 2007. 17, which is one of my least favorite Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah. So Madeline really likes that movie, but <laughs> we're not too huge of fans of it. But a movie we were a big fan of until we just rewatched it was Law Abiding Citizen. And Dennis, what happened? <laughs> yeah, um, when it first came out, this movie was all the rage. I remember everyone in school talking about it. Everyone was like, oh, did you see this film? It's so crazy. And it was awesome, and absolutely loved it. And then rewatching it, let me preface it by saying the film is still good, the movie is not terrible, but the deeper meaning when you look for it is pretty horrible and bleak. Yeah, and it's kind of a mess the way they deliver it. So this movie stars Jamie Foxx as, I guess he's the assistant district attorney, and Gerard Butler is... Um, well, he's just a regular guy in the beginning, right? With a family, a husband. He has a very crazy backstory, but he's just a husband. He's got a wife and daughter, and they're murdered in the beginning of this movie. And he feels like the justice system did him wrong. More specifically, Jamie Foxx and his whole office just dropped the ball on the sentencing of the guy who killed his family. Yeah, he feels that Jamie Foxx, you know, this is like such a classic stereotype, I feel like, in all film and TV of district attorneys, lawyers, and everything. All they care about is their success rate, is mm -hmm. their conviction rate. And he feels that there was enough evidence to get this guy the death penalty or to get him in jail, whatever it is. And Jamie Foxx didn't think he could win it. It wasn't a slam dunk, and he didn't want his conviction rate to go down. Mm -mm. So he just made a deal with the guy. Yeah. And that pissed Gerard Butler off. So he decides, you know what, the legal system doesn't work, which in real life we know it, it pretty much doesn't. No. Nope. And he's going to take matters into his own hands. Uh, yeah. And at first, you agree with him. Yeah, And you're you like, do. yeah, this guy is because pretty badass. At the beginning, he's only really killing the people who did him wrong. He just kills that, he kills the one guy, like, he sneaks into the prison. I guess he sneaks in there, somehow he gets it that he can take, uh, cause what is it called when somebody gets killed by this? Uh, lethal injection. Lethal injection yeah. So he makes it so that this guy is gonna suffer before he dies, and then he also gets a hold of the guy who actually killed his wife and daughter and tortures him. But he knows so well the judicial system now that he knows that he isn't going to get arrested or convicted for these, no one's gonna figure it out until he plans on them figuring it out. Yeah, and that's kind of what you find out as the movie develops, is he has some crazy black ops story where mm -hmm. he was super top secret agent, like a 007 kind of guy, and you know, he can do anything he wants, kill you without even being near you, we find out, and like you said, the one guy gets convicted, and he is sentenced to death, and somehow he sneaks in some sort of poison to make the guy seize up and burn inside and before he dies, and the other guy who got off because he made a deal with Jamie Foxx, he finds, and actually in one of the cooler like twists he Gerard Butler dresses as the cop yeah pretends he's in the car sleeping knows this guy's gonna take his gun and try to shoot him and when the guy pulls the trigger spikes come out of the the hand and yeah it puts him to sleep yeah it was really cool a lot of the tricks and stuff he did were really cool but once he got his revenge on them he set his sights on Jamie Foxx and the legal team that's where it kind of gets to that muddy water where it's like all right now all of a sudden I don't really know if this guy is doing good anymore. No, and I don't, and I can't tell if the message is supposed to be like, because the way they set it up is like I felt like we were originally supposed to feel for Gerard Butler and that Jamie Foxx is going to learn his lesson, but we're still supposed to feel for him. But as the movie goes on, they want you to root for Jamie Foxx, and I guess they want you to hate Gerard Butler. Because there's a line towards the end of the movie where Jamie Foxx, because Jamie Foxx has always done everything by the book, even though he's just looking out for himself, he's always done everything by the book. So he's working with this one cop, and they're opening the door, and they're like, oh, that's going to be a violation of his civil rights. And he says, fuck his civil rights. And I was like, that feels like a total betrayal of your entire character. Yeah, no, and I agree. When you brought that up, it like you know, shined a light a little bit deeper into the meaning for me, which is basically that there's no hope. I mean... You have Gerard Butler, who put all of his hope in the legal system. It fails him, so he decides to get revenge himself. And in doing so, he becomes essentially that bad guy that he hated and wanted revenge on because mm -hmm. he starts killing 
really innocent people. Innocent people die. Yeah. The worst. Hands. The worst of them has to be that assistant, the blonde woman. Yeah. Who? It's such a heartbreaking scene. All the cars are blowing up in the prison, and you see her locked in, and she's banging on the window, crying. Yeah. And she was just talking about how she's hoping to get a relationship and take it a little bit easier because she's been working so hard for her career. And then he kills her. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, he's the evil guy, and Jamie Foxx is the good guy, like you said. Yeah. But then, in the end, Jamie Foxx even turns his back on his beliefs and becomes a bad guy and murders someone. Yeah, in the prison. Like, is no one going to bring up the fact that this prison blew up? Like, there's only him and the other cop. Like, and he, how do you explain, like, oh, no, what I did was I took that bomb. I didn't think we should <laughs> defuse it. Um, I'm, I put it in his cell, and yes, I did blow a hole in most of the prison, but... <laughs> Gerard Butler's dead, and that's all we wanted, because Viola <laughs> Davis made that clear, too. Like, I just want him gone. So Jamie Foxx like, well, I got rid of him. He ain't coming back. Yeah. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. And that's the thing, is like, every single person you were supposed to root for ultimately does something that you're like, oh, God, what? That's not... You're At the very least, you're hoping Jamie Foxx, in the end, you know, finds the bomb, gets defused, and then locks this guy away in a maximum security until he's, like, tried... And if he's found guilty, put on death row, whatever it is. But no, he turns his back on everything and says, I don't even care anymore, like, rules out the window, I'm just going to kill this guy. And now he's a bad guy. So, to me, the message is like, it doesn't matter what you believe in, ultimately, the only thing that ever gets the job done is being evil. Yeah, and that's literally how I'm going to finish things off, too, is I'm going to end up eventually overtaking Let's Talk and killing Dennis and Matt. Pretty simple. Pretty simply, actually. I, I mean, I look forward to the day. Yeah, you guys <laughs> both should, because it'll be very simple, and I've taken a lot of notes. I just watched Law Abiding Citizen, so I should be able to pull this off, no problem. <laughs> the one scene that I definitely, um, I think is the turning point big time for Gerard Butler's character is when he's in the prison, you remember, because he's playing games all the time, he's like, I want a better mattress, and I want this, and that, and the yeah. whole... And he asks for that dinner. Yeah. And he takes that T-bone from the steak. And kills. And just jams the guy in the neck so many times. There's blood everywhere. And then the guy's like sitting there, he's spitting up all the food. And yeah. as he's dead, Gerard Butler like is just licking the barbecue sauce or the steak sauce off his fingers and eating. Like that to me was the point where like, all right, this guy, he's no longer a vigilante. He is absolutely out of his mind. And he's playing it like a supervillain, like almost, like a sick villain. Like, yeah. And Gerard Butler does play the role, like it's acted well, I just think that the screenplay isn't good. You yeah. Know? <laughs> no, I agree. Everyone played the role. Jamie Foxx was great. Gerard Butler was great. Everyone, and all the little traps and stuff he set up were great. Mm -hmm. It was very much like a supervillain who is coming, you know, like the Joker. He sets all these traps in the Dark Knight, you know, the yeah. Ledger's Joker. And he's like, sent, and the Riddler, or you know, in the newer one, all these little clues and all these little traps he's setting up. That's what Gerard Butler was doing. Mm -hmm. The only problem was our like superhero in Jamie Fox just becomes a villain in the end too. Yeah. So what's the message here? I, I guess evil always corrupts good. I guess that's the message. And yeah. In the end, like that's it. Everybody has it in them. They just need it unlocked. I, I don't know. Like yeah. you know, it's, we're all one bad thing away from snapping and murdering everybody. Yeah. I, I don't know. It would literally be if in the end of the Dark Knight, Christian Bale's Batman just pulled out a shotgun and blasted Heath Ledger's head off. Yeah. It was like, yeah. He broke his entire moral code. That's not what we want to see. We want to see people have a moral code, or else what's the point? It's anarchy. Every, yeah. Like you said, everything's bleak. Everything's bad. There's no good in the world. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to tell us? I, I don't imagine so, because the movie's called Law Abiding Citizen. Yeah. I didn't see many laws abided by. Yeah, no, <laughs> hardly any. But yeah. I, again, not a bad movie. No, I still it's, like it. It's so do I. I still enjoyed it. It's very well made as far yeah. as, like, visually. It's I, I watched it on 4K. It looked good. The sound was good. It's, like, you know, it's a good movie. It's just... I don't know, when you watch it with a different set of eyes, um, it just doesn't work as a movie. Yeah, the message is muddy, and the only thing you can pull from it is extremely negative. But, like you said, shot beautifully. One of, in my opinion, one of the greatest scenes is the end, when he's blowing up in the jail cell, and he sits there and he holds that bracelet his daughter made him. Yeah. And the flame just slowly and it's behind goes around. Him. Yeah. yeah, that was really, really, really nice. I enjoyed that scene a lot. Uh, and there's a lot of that around here. Like I said, most of this film is great. One or two tweaks to the end with Jamie Fox and stuff would have made it even better. And I think you would have been sent home with a very clear and positive message. I agree. I just think that's what needed to be cleaned up. So if I was going to rate this movie out of 10, you know, it's like, like Dennis said, it still looked good. It's still well acted. Um, it's not directed the greatest and it's not written the greatest. But overall, I still think you can watch this movie. 
you just got to know what you're going into. So if I was going to rate this, I'd probably still give it like a 5 out of 10. Just right down the middle. Wow, all right. That was lower than I thought you'd go. I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10. That's fair. Yeah, I still think it's a good film. Highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. If you have, recommend the rewatch. Just understand that, you know, you're going to take something different as you, you know, yeah. mature in your own life and you start to, if you're looking for deeper meanings, the deeper meaning here is not very good. No, I feel like that's where the ball was fumbled, picked up, and returned for a touchdown. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's noon. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining us on another edition of Let's Talk. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed me and Dennis's conversation on the Law Abiding Citizen. And this week, we have two digital codes available. You have your choice of the codes that you guys see on your screen here. Or if we have some other ones and you guys want to reach out and try and see if we have it, feel free. We asked you what was your favorite MCU superhero, and we asked what was your favorite DC superhero. And you guys have a, a wider range. You guys had a pretty wide range of answers, and that was pretty awesome. We saw some Batman in there, which is my personal favorite of all time. We saw some Spider-Man, some Superman, which I've never been the biggest Superman fan. As strange as that is, I just never got into the character. Like, I didn't really enjoy Christopher Reeve's Superman. So those movies are very well made, and it has one of the most iconic John Williams scores. But the films, they just, I don't know if I was just, I came to them too old. But for me, Henry Cavill's Man of Steel is my favorite Superman. He's my, he is my Superman. Man of Steel is actually a fantastic movie, even if I feel like the third act is a little too long, and I personally would have cut it down if it was my choice. But again, I'm not a director. I'm not Zack Snyder, so who am I to say? And I know a lot of people love that movie more than me. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. So some Spider-Man in there, which I know we've gotten a lot of great Spider-Mans over the last few years. And for me, my personal favorite Spider-Man is Into the Spider-Verse, so I'm really excited for the second one of those. So it's just really cool to talk to you guys about your favorite superheroes in the comments section. Which leads us right into this week's Digital Code giveaway. So enough about me rambling, let's see who this week's two winners are going to be. Wheel spin number one coming your way. Congratulations, Steve. You win round number one. Let's remove your name so we can get to see who's number two. And Laura. Laura, you win number two. All right. Congratulations, Steve and Laura. I believe this is both of yours first wins and I believe you guys have all both been entering for quite a while now so congratulations to the two of you I'm really glad that you guys won and you guys know how this works direct message us on Twitter Facebook or Instagram or you can always email us at let's talk e -N -T -M -T at gmail.com I know that email address can be a little confusing and cause a lot of typos believe me I spell it wrong all the time eventually we'll make one that's a little more practical I guess but for now Hit us up on one of those, direct message us, let us know which digital code you guys want, and we'll send that right over to you as fast as we can. And this upcoming Friday, we're going to probably do the same thing. We're going to give away two more digital codes to two lucky winners, so make sure you guys check out this Friday's video, which is either going to be X-Men or The Invitation. I'm not too sure yet. We haven't, made a we haven't made a final decision on the end of the week's videos yet. But I'm really glad to see that everyone's interacting more on the channel and enjoying some of the new stuff we're trying to do. I'm really glad that people enjoyed the video we did yesterday, which was just a almost like a podcast where me and Matt just sat around, had a couple beers, and talked about Blu-rays, upcoming 4K Blu-ray releases, what we love about physical media. We're going to be doing one of those every week since everyone seemed to really enjoy that, and, we really, and we're really glad we did. That was a big swing for us, so we're really excited that you guys really did enjoy watching that and watching me and Matt just talk. We do that every day anyway, so we're really glad that you guys really did enjoy it. It really means a, it, everything we do on this channel that you guys really do appreciate means the world to us. If there's anything you guys want to see us do on the channel, we always say, please let us know in the comment section. We'll get around to trying stuff that you guys never have seen people review before. We'll do that. Anything. We're really trying to make this work. And the only way we can do that is by improving. So if there's anything that you guys think we can improve on, feel free to let us know. We are always trying to make things better for everybody. And nothing helps us out more than by liking the video, 
commenting on the video and subscribing to the channel. So anyway guys, congratulations to this week's two winners and we'll be seeing you around. Enjoy your week.